This is Maria Lorena Lehman with SensingArchitecture.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about occupant experience, specifically looking at healthcare architecture and a recovery room for a patient. So the patient will be our occupant in this example. As you can see here, I've already drawn a very, very rough diagram of a typical patient room that you might typically see. Uh, in this upper hand corner, left hand corner might be a restroom area. Uh, over here in the upper right hand corner might be a window with hopefully a view of some trees uh, or nature. On this wall might be paintings or interactive video displays or televisions. Of course, this is the patient bed or central point where, of where the patient spends most of their time. And um, we also have an area for visitors, which is all very important. And this, of course, is our main entry and exit into and from the room. Now, as you can see, there is already a narrative going on within this patient room. The patient has different activities with which they need to be involved, both things that they want to do and things that their medical team and doctors are prescribing them to do, usually to help them heal and keep their spirits up while within the hospital. Some of the things that are important for you as an architect to understand when, when designing for your occupants in this manner might be hierarchy and timing in conjunction with your occupant needs. And of course, as I said before, their needs might be what they want and what the medical staff thinks they should want and need. And all of this leads them on their path to recovery. I think it is here where architecture often misses a beat, where the overall architectural solution tries to share all of these requirements and activities within one space. But what I think might be most interesting for you as an architect is to track the patterns in a story-like fashion where, for instance, with timing at certain times in the day, a patient might need to engage in their activities of daily living. They may need help getting to and from the restroom. At other times of day, they may need more time for contemplation or peaceful thinking, where looking at a view of nature has actually often been found to help patient and heal. At other times of day, they may need distraction, to watch television or interactive video displays, but similarly, the video displays could also serve to inform them and teach them how to take care of themselves and pr prepare them for their trip home. Likewise, visitors can be allowed in at certain times. So the room is usually today in a one-size-fits-all standard state. But with transient architecture, I wonder how we can pull resources together within a room to really make each activity sing. For instance, the interactive television display might actually serve to teach them or inform them with activities and exercises so they can get better and more independent over time and begin to engage more readily in their activities of daily living. So the idea here would be for you as an architect to begin to pull the different resources within the room, like the restrooms, televisions, interactive displays, views of nature, spaces for contemplation, visitor areas, patient bed, and of course this involves room lighting, flooring, wall materials, ceiling materials, so that they might become transient and work together in an orchestrated fashion 
to help emphasize certain elements within a room at certain times when the patients need it most. And this might help them to recover faster and better. Thank you for listening. This is Maria Lorena Lehman with SensingArchitecture.com.